you know, something happened last night. I got to get your thoughts on Wisconsin fired their head coach, Paul Christ. I got to be honest with you. I'm, I'm like confused. Let me, let me read to you Paul Christ since he's been at Wisconsin. Okay. 10 and three won the holiday bowl. 11 and three won the cotton bowl, which is a, what they call it a new year six. 13 and one won the orange bowl. New year six. Then he had a down year, eight and five in 2018, won the pinstripe bowl. Then they bounce back 10 and four lose the Rose bowl. That was to Justin Herbert, right? That awesome game. Yeah, exactly. Okay. 2020 was the COVID year four and three. And they won the Duke's Mayo bowl last year, 21, nine and four won the Las Vegas bowl. So far this year, it's not been good. Two and three. And they fire him. I'm like stunned by this, Emery. Like stunned. This is the type of thing where, you know, they had so much stability in that program. You knew what you were getting from Wisconsin. They're always good. I mean, he hasn't had a bad year yet. Um, He's had one down year, I would say, maybe. You know, he's only had two years that they didn't win double-digit games. I mean, this is nuts. This is that they have a chance to really take a big step back now. Right. For me, I I look at Wisconsin, how I view the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, you go from a Barry Alvarez to, you know, a Paul Christ, right? A great coach. And it's you're watching this program, like you say, consistency. Or you go from Brett Bilema to Paul Chris. So you you're you're having success follow success and it's so stable and folks may feel like Wisconsin you can only be 13 and one at best because at the end of the day you, you're you gonna have to play Ohio State in a championship game in a Big Ten championship game and you hope that you can beat Ohio State one of these years right or you know um, someone like that but the stability of the program knowing how good you are consistently knowing that you're gonna get your pick of the offensive lineman that you want, your defensive line is going to be good as a byproduct. You tend to get at least two to three of the top backs in the country, and you're always in ball games, and you're always going to have a shot. So I, I don't I don't know why you get rid of Paul Chris. I, when, they, when I saw the news, I'm expecting, okay, well, maybe he got caught gambling, buying this, buying that, because there has to be some overarching reason why you get rid of, Paul Chris, who's one of the best coaches uh, in college football at one of the, you know, more stable programs for me is just, is dumbfounded. So, and if you're what, what they'd never understand is that when you are on the other side of it, um, let's say you're on the outside looking in and you see that move happen. If you're a coach, you're thinking, well, damn, if Wisconsin did that to him with that record, why would I want to go coach at Wisconsin? It's almost like Wisconsin is operating as if they are one of these southern coaching, uh, you know, collegiate programs that want to fire coaches because they, they're mad, like Texas or Texas A&M with these big oil boosters are saying, like, all right, we'll pay the $86 million buyout to get rid of this guy because we want to win because we lost to, to App State. Wisconsin doesn't do that. So it, it makes you wonder why and when, with this happen, who's going to want to go and coach at, at Wisconsin? That's a really good point. Really good. Like, what are the expectations for this AD? What is he expecting you to to get done at Wisconsin if you're going to fire Paul Chris? At least give him the rest of the year to see if they turn it around, right? Like, I, I am may I think maybe that maybe the new uh, the AD wants Jim Leonard to be the guy and is giving him the chance to turn it around this year. I, I don't know what is going on there. But I thought that was something interesting we need to discuss.